Welcome to this session. Thank you for attending. Thank you for being here at DevOx. We are really proud of being at one more edition of DevOx and congratulations for all the community efforts for doing DevOx Morocco. This session will talk about adding ears, eyes, and uh, mouth to your IoT project. That means communication, human interface, and lots of protocols behind that. So we'll talk about that. Vini and I, our Twitter handle, handles are there. So at Yara Sanger and V Sanger. We are founders of Global Code and also our own conference called the Developers Conference, which will be 10 years in 2016. We are part of the board of Soul Java, and we also run the J Duchess chapter in Brazil, so trying to get more women involved in technology. Uh, this year, we just launched our second hardware pro product, IoT Surfboard. We will we'll be talking a little bit about that. We both are Java champions. We got the Duke Choice Award and got the title as Java One Rockstar Speakers in 2011. So, uh, I must say thank you to this great program called uh, Java Champions. So, this pro project, this program, is kept by the community. So, the, the, the Java Champions takes care about accepting, approving, inviting new people to be Java Champions. The program is uh, maintained by Oracle, which supports that and helps these Java champions to go around the world and share knowledge. So if you are not aware about Java champion, you, would, you should really take a look on this program, talk to the Java user group, and understand how your community fits to that program. So thank you very much, Oracle and Java champions program for helping us to be here. So, uh, the Internet of Things is a, a great possibility to put together your passion, your problem, your life, and the technology. So here there's a, a, a short list of some projects we have been working with. So horse telemetry, uh, just to learn more about accelerometer and the herd and everything from the horse uh, racing horses. We also worked on a smart boat project that was a big passion. So it starts with a broken automatic pilot and end up taking pictures, censoring gas, censoring water pumps and lots of other things. We also put another passion together with the Internet of Things with this uh, biking. So we got uh, near a startup that wants to do this smart helmet, putting together uh, picture, GPS, connectivity through, through your Android phone, teetering or anything. So it was this uh, helmet for bike hiding. Uh, also, uh, do-it-yourself satellite for fifth grade kids. Minecraft robot with bi-directional communication to the game. And uh, also a smart building project with a framework we developed called J-Home. So, that are some interesting projects. Just to let we know, we are going to talk uh, a, a brief uh, basic concepts. Can, if you already did anything with Arduino or Raspberry Pi or Intel Edison, can you just stand your hand? Okay, thank you. Let's go for the basics. So, uh, good morning everybody. I am Vini, Vinicius Sanger. Uh, in IoT space, if you look in the abstract architecture, we still have the layers like in the past that we had a uh, client server approach and so we had three tier approach, four tier approach, approach and tier approach. So in the same, in the same idea, uh, we have almost four layers or more for IoT. We have the edge device which will be the very low energy, low power consumption and uh, 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 low capabilities device to grab the data from the sensors. The edge device, uh, mostly they are not smart or they cannot be very smart. And we have the gateway uh, to deal with the edge devices and transmit the data to the cloud. And so from the gateway we have the cloud 
and now the server side, and so you, we have the consumers. Uh, so the edge device, uh, many times we will be using microcontrollers without any kind of operational system, or we are going to use a minimum operational system, or we are going to use a real-time operational system depending on the, on the, 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 the type of the project and uh, the process uh, uh, that you need there. You will have sensors and controllings, controlling motors, controlling lamps, controlling uh, infrared devices, and edge devices uh, may not support TCP IP. They, they can be so, so small that they just communicate using a specific protocol and a physical communication layer like a, a radio frequency, uh, ZigBees, uh, uh, we have Bluetooth communication, which is not TCP IP. Uh, and many, many edge devices can, can have uh, real-time support, like if you have a board that you don't have any kind of operational system, if you don't have the operational system, it's, uh, it's up to you how your code will answer and how much it will delay. You can, you can have all the control uh, around the delays in your edge device, and this is what we call as real-time support. Being a real-time device doesn't mean that it's fast or the performance is great. Real-time support means that you don't allow delays. And so the next layer would be the gateway. The gateway, we, we are going to use a regular operational system, mostly uh, uh, we use Linux for doing that. We are going to use microprocessor or system on chip, which is a, a, a complete computer inside just one uh, chip. So low energy is not very low energy like the edge device and may support something uh, other thing than TCP IP. The gateway is very responsible for translating like the ZigBee to TCP IP, the infrared to TCP IP, the Bluetooth to TCP IP. The very common uh, consumer product that use edge device and gateway are the smart watches. Uh, smart watch, they are Bluetooth because Wi-Fi would be too much for a smart watch. And uh, for your smart watch, for your Bluetooth smart watch to communicate with the, the, the gateway, uh, uh, it will use the Bluetooth and the gateway will be your cell phone. So your cell phone is a very popular, uh, the most popular uh, internet gateway is the uh, smartphones. And the gateway will have many responsibilities different from the edge device. The edge device, they are limited to control some stuff and to read some sensors and to do something else, but not too much. And the gateway will be providing like integration layer, security layer, persistence layer, and so on. And we have the cloud computing, so it's very related to the Internet of Things, the big data, uh, big data, transforming the big data in knowledge, transforming the, the pure data in uh, uh, information, and so transforming the information and knowledge, and transforming the knowledge in intelligence. So that's the way we can predict the future, the sensors, and uh, uh, make the things very smart, like if you are running with RunKeeper, uh, RunKeeper, if you are using RunKeeper standalone, it cannot uh, uh, compare your performance with your friend's performance. So once you have all the big data and all the, 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 the collective data, you can bring intelligence to your device. Social network and many other things that we have in the cloud, cloud uh, computing. And the consumers, uh, we can have the consumer's application consuming the data from the cloud or from the gateway directly using different types of protocols. Now we have more than 10 new uh, good protocols for Internet of Things. MQTT is the senior protocol for Internet of Things. 
MQTT is in the market the last 15 years, so it's almost old like Java, but now it's getting more popular because of Internet of Things. Uh, we have some uh, more advanced and uh, 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 redesigned protocol for the days uh, that we are living, like AMQP, QP, CoAP is another protocol that is very interesting for Internet of Things, but is not that popular like MQTT. I will talk more about MQTT today. I will be using a lot. Uh, you also have the human and the application protocols like REST, web services, and other APIs. But uh, for communicating device to device, using REST would be too much energy consumption. And when we are talking about Internet of Things, every time you send a message over the, over the network, you must take care in how much uh, uh, data you are spending. Like today, the, the people just write REST application and they don't care about uh, how much, how, how big is the datagram. Let's extract one character from one place to make it lighter. So that's not the, the, the concept of doing web applications. We don't care about energy consumption and, and network consumption as we take care in the Internet of Things. And uh, the most popular consumers for Internet of Things are the phones and the tablets and video games, but you can have other devices. Today we bring here the Intel RealSense for uh, uh, emotion recognition, gesture recognition, and uh, you have the Kinect and many devices that can interact with all this space. And so that's the idea of the four layers behind Internet of Things. So the edge device, uh, uh, we have this sample here, the IoT surfboard. We don't have TCP IP in our IoT surfboard. Uh, and uh, it's not a smart uh, device. And uh, we are using here the ZigBee. ZigBee is a wireless uh, communication in the same frequency as Wi-Fi, but it's much more low energy consumption. And you have the concept of mashup network. One ZigBee can talk with another ZigBee that can talk with another ZigBee. With that, you can have very long distance network, like ZigBee is very used in farms to monitor. Like in Brazil, we are crazy about barbecue. And many times that we are eating, a very special piece of meat, I used to say, hey, take care about this meat, appreciate this meat, because this is an IoT cow. They, they, this meat was monitored since the cow just born, and, and they, they monitor all the time this special uh, kind of meat. And uh, Zigbee, uh, we have another good thing around Zigbee, is that Zigbee itself is a microcontroller, so you can plug direct some sensors direct to the ZigBee. You don't need Raspberry Pi or Arduino. You can use just the ZigBee module. And the only thing about ZigBee is that it's kind of expensive, but is a professional way to communicate and create IoT. And today we have here this board. This board uh, we will be showing. This is uh, the IoT surfboard, which is based on Arduino, and also it has a ZigBee. With that, we can have many, much more sensors. We can have display, and we are going to, to uh, uh, power this guy just using a very simple phone, phone, charge, phone charger battery. So this is the device that we are going to use as our uh, ZigBee Edge device. Uh, the surfboard, um, we have many different sensors. It's a Brazilian board. Is a product that we are launching based on, on open source standards with many open source software behind. And just to share something here, uh, we see that uh, the Java community, the open source community, and the makers community had lots of things in common. So both are, if we think about the Java community, it's essentially a makers community. Of course, we are making code, but we still making things, making projects, making 
you know, the tools we need, making, solving our own problems. So the IoT surfboard was the, our first experience with crowdfunding, and it was awesome. If you have your own project, if you have your own idea, and you want to go for it, we highly recommend you to take a look, to make your business plan or your, uh, your MVP, and, uh, you know, go for it. It's really a fantastic experience of doing crowdfunding. So the gateway will be the entrance point for the, the other devices that they are known, TCP IP devices. Uh, it will convert the protocols, like if you have a infrared uh, uh, equipment in your house, uh, you can, you can uh, uh, just press the, send a tweet to your gateway. The gateway will receive your tweet through the TCP IP and the Twitter protocol and the gateway will take care about uh, uh, sending the infrared sign to your infrared equipment. So that's the basic concept of a gateway. Uh, here, what we have as a gateway is the uh, Gemalto concept board. It's a very nice one. I forgot to. We are really using very hard this uh, board called Gemalto Concept Board. We have here in this wood surfboard in the back, we have this board. It has a Java ME uh, support in the silver processor here. Uh, we, you have here the 2G and 3G connection and also GPS. Uh, not in this model, but you have a model with GPS so in just one system on chip, you can have Java update over the air. You can run many applications in, at the same time. You can have like a, a, a sleep mode to spend less, uh, to consume less energy. And uh, it's a very, very nice board. This is, uh, it's running Java ME 3.2. It's a very powerful platform very used in the industry, in the real industry. And this is for doing real product for, uh, uh, for the industry, like many, many uh, payment system and payment machines that you just pass your credit card. Uh, they are using this guy. In Brazil, all the payment machine are using uh, this uh, guy. So okay. sometimes the people ask at me about how is the Internet of Things and security? Oh, it's good. You use your credit card, credit card, and the machines, the, the credit card machines, they are all edge devices. Credit card system is an IoT system, but it's all about money. If you trust your credit card and that machine, you can be sure that you can have a reliable and secure project in IoT space. Just do like the banks. If you have problem with your data, you must take care about your data like the banks take care about our data. So this is just the developer board. Of course, when we go to production, they are not using this orange board. They are just using the chip and then factoring in another way. So this is just developer board. Yeah. And uh, when we went to this uh, conference, Gemalto conference, we saw lots of uh, layers. You can do cr cr cryptography and other stuff on top of that. So you can even go further with the security adding physical layers to that. Yeah, and the good thing about this board is also that it's a small gateway. It has TCP IP, and uh, you can have a standalone small gateway and edge device in the same guy. So this guy can act, can store data, and can make many other things. So we love to work with Gemalto boards and Gemalto guys. They are amazing engineers. It's German company, and uh, just work, you know, is amazing. And you can have bigger gateways, like a Gemalto concept board is two megabytes of RAM, which for me is a lot. Like <laughs> I'm used to work with two kilobytes of RAM, so we make magic with that. So two megabytes is good, but it's not good to run like uh, I want to run an application server. I want to run a REST server here. I want to run a business intelligence. So that would be enough, wouldn't be enough. So uh, for 
makers and prototyping is very common to use Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi is very nice size for gateway devices. You can run Java 8 in Raspberry Pi. Amazing support from Oracle to make the Java to perform great into the Raspberry Pi. They, they really optimize in low level instruction uh, 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 to make Java better for Raspberry Pi. And uh, for Raspberry Pi, is another thing that is important, it, it handles video, you can plug it on a monitor or a TV, and uh, lots of people are using JavaFX on this case with Raspberry Pi, it works really well. Yeah, that's true. So. JavaFX performed great on Raspberry Pi because Raspberry Pi, almost half of the processor is a graphical processor unit. So if you are using a, rasp a headless Raspberry Pi, you are using half of the Raspberry Pi powerful. And then, uh, because it's not an edge device, depending on which sensors or actuators you want to use, you might end up using an Arduino together or yeah. uh, another edge device that takes care of uh, these real-time sensors. And as you can see here in the image, we just have on board the Ethernet cable connection. So here we need to use a Wi-Fi dongle if we want to provide wireless connection to your Raspberry Pi. Uh, so uh, you have the audio and the video but, and the Ethernet, but you don't have the Wi-Fi uh, uh, inside the Raspberry Pi uh, system on chip. So the next guy uh, for doing gateways is the Intel Edison. Intel Edison is a three-core board. It's smaller than Raspberry Pi, and you have two atoms and one quark. You have two atoms running Linux. The quark is bar metal, so you can have the best of both worlds running real-time stuff and running uh, 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 applications on Linux. And beyond the three cores, we also have Bluetooth low energy and Wi-Fi. And this is great to see that the size of Intel Edison is half of a credit card. So it's amazing that Intel is doing this crazy thing. And actually, Intel Edison is a two years old board. Intel just announced the Intel Curry, which is the, a bottom size of board, and you can do wearable uh, uh, very easy and uh, with low energy and everything. Here's the same case as Gemalto. The board is bigger because it's a developer board, and when we talk that the, the chip is half of the size of a credit card. But something nice, they just announced the Java one this year, uh, Azul, Azul Systems, who does the JVM, high-performance JVM, including the JVM that is running inside Microsoft Azure, uh, just uh, announced the, the new uh, uh, Zulu 4 Embedded, which is a, a, a distribution based on OpenJDK that was customized and high performance for Intel Edison. So now what we have, it's an OpenJDK JVM that is being uh, customized and uh, uh, made for Embedded, which is pretty good for the Embedded community in terms of licensing. So I show here as Edge device we are using this ZigBee guy, we are using this IoT surfboard that could be connected to the 3G. Not today, we are not using the 3G um, to avoid uh, any problem with the communication. But we have this guy that is connected through the USB cable in my computer. And we bring this guy, we did this IO tablet. This is a wood, a wood uh, computer. Inside this computer, I don't know if I put the picture here. Okay, inside this computer, we have the Raspberry Pi. Sorry, the Raspberry Pi here. We also have the Intel Edison here, and a battery, and we have a ZigBee module in the side. We have in this, in this computer, we have a Raspberry Pi 2, which is a four, uh, a quad core. <laughs> We have the Intel Edison with three cores. So inside this computer, I have seven different cores. <laughs> and I have 
Wi-Fi support, Zigbee support, and Bluetooth low energy support. And I have another thing that is a lighter for Sigur. <laughs> so in this case, we needed to use the Raspberry Pi because of the screen to handle images, sound, video. And then the Intel Edson runs the, connect, uh, runs the connectivity, right? Yeah, that's true. So, so we use it a lot, this, this laptop. And uh, uh, it's great to build your own laptop. Now, I was waiting the last 20 years to build my own computer. And because of Internet of Things and because of single board computer, uh, 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 big wave of single board computers, you can start doing your own laptop. And this is it's working great. I'm running, we are running from conference to conference and we just uh, power this guy and it starts working. So amazing to see that. And I'm using a screen. This screen is colored chalkboard. It comes from the iPad 1 or iPad 2 and is a kind of $100 screen, it's a touch screen, and very nice resolution. So it's very good to customize your own laptop, like I can, I can use my car, my, my pow the power 12 volts from my car to, to give energy to this laptop, so it's much better than the power energy from laptops, which is mostly 19 uh, volts which is not easy to find a, a plug with 19 volts. So um, to resume, we have today the IoT surfboard. This guy plug it through the USB uh, connection, plug it in my laptop. We have the IoT surfboard uh, with the Zigbee and using uh, the IO tablet as gateway and XB as communication, XB or Zigbee. And we have, just to show here, the IoT surfboard integrated with a concept board. Uh, we have in the menu, but we are not demo uh, this board today. Uh, so in the Edge device, we did a framework called IoT API for Arduino. Actually, it's not for just for Arduino, it's for the family of microcontrollers behind Arduino called HTML. And uh, this framework helps you to integrate. And uh, behind this framework, we have the IoT surfing protocol, which is a JSON protocol. Uh, is a, a standard protocol. It's the same protocol if you are using USB, if you are using XB, 2G, 3G, or any other way to communicate. Even Bluetooth, we, we are supporting in our framework. And 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 here, just uh, uh, this is the most challenging for Java developers since we do have other protocols and we deal with uh, real-time interruptions and how to handle the sensors that uh, are, you know, reading very, very fast, lots of times per second. So the bigger challenge for Java developers that wants to get into IoT is exactly how to handle this data from the edge device and bring them to the gateway layer. And when we are on the gateway layer, we are already coding very familiar code for us, Java code already. So in the gateways, we, we developed a IoT surfing service, which is a Java microservices kernel for the Internet of Things. It's an open source. We are working in this framework the last six years. In the beginning, it was call, it call, we call as JHome, and so we changed for uh, Things API for Java, and now we are calling this new framework, this new version that we refactored to have a microservice kernel, and the name is IoT Surfing Service. And uh, on this IoT Surfing Service, the main idea is to get all the data, pre-process that, and send the interesting information to the cloud to be really processed or applying big data or any other concept. So that's an important communication layer. So uh, For the code in the Edge device, the code, this is a C code, very, very simple to understand. So here I'm saying in my Edge device that I have a red LED plugged in the port number 10. 
the green, the blue. I have a relay plugged in the digital port number four, a speaker in the digital port number 16, alcohol sensor in the analog port number zero. So what I'm doing here, I am declaring the stuff that I put in my edge device, that I connect, that I wire up in my edge devices. So with that, the, 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 the edge device will be able to describe itself, and the gateway will be able to discover the edge device automatically. If you change the components in the edge device, you don't need to change your protocol, you don't need to change your gateway. So that's very very nice way to code Arduino because if you do a lot of C code in Arduino, you, in the end you are going to have a very a very uh, anti-pattern code like a spaghetti code. We try to avoid it in the edge devices since the Arduino code is getting more and more value to the business. And uh, uh, we also have here declaring a temperature and a humidity sensor, as you can see here. Uh, this is a custom sensor. It means that uh, reading the humidity is not easy like just reading a digital port or an analog port. We, need that we have some complexity in terms of the electronic protocol that we are using to communicate with the humidity sensor. So we are saying, I have the humidity sensor, it's a custom sensor, and please call this function, so this is a function pointer, uh, and true, saying this is a sensor. And uh, the protocol, uh, once you declare the components that you have inside your IoT edge device, you can ask, like you send to your edge device, edge device, give me your sensors reading. And so it will return to you a JSON or you can choose a JSON or a very flat text with all the, 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 the values, all the sensor values, and so you can parse this JSON uh, in your preferred platform like JavaScript, Node, Red, or anything else. So this is the way we relate the JSON result and the declaration we did in our Edge device. And uh, so here we have the edge device, the JSON messages running on MQTT and the rest uh, passing to the gateway. And uh, we have MQTT and REST, Android uh, uh, consuming, JavaScript consumers, and you could write your client using your preferred programming language, Python, C Sharp, Java. So today, the first demo we are going to use is our edge devices. Let me put the battery here. And we are going to use the IoT surfing service. And we are going to use a, a MQTT client called MQTT FX. And this is a very nice tool, client for uh, JavaFX, for, for MQTT, that uh, James just wrote in JavaFX. He's a great guy doing a great project. He's the best MQTT client you can download in the internet. And fortunately, it was written in Java and JavaFX, very good case for that. And thanks, James, for, for doing this nice work. So let me show you here. Um, I am already running the gateway, the IoT surfing service here. So just what I'm doing, I will stop the gateway, clean the message, and uh, start it again. Welcome to Surfing IoT Services. So, it's looking for Arduinos plugged in my uh, computer. So, it's trying to communicate with a COM port that is not uh, an Arduino port. And finally, it found the cone 5. It said surfboard 1 plugged into surfing IoT. And now you can see that it's reading the data from the sensors and receiving the JSON and sending the JSON message to the MQTT. And it's also listening to an MQTT queue so I could receive the data from the sensors and also send, uh, ask 
for the device to, to, to make some action. So let's show it. I'm going to connect this guy to, I am using here as broker, I am using the iot.eclipse.org in this port number. This is a open MQTT broker. Anyone can use, you don't need to even create a kind of account. You just go there and use that. So it's very nice for demonstrations. And let's connect and let's subscribe to the surfboard one. Subscribe and I'm going to start to receive uh, uh, JSON messages here. Here we go. So I have here all the data uh, in JSON. Very easy to read. And the good stuff is that I could have like thousands of uh, subscribers. And I, I don't need to take care in how each subscriber will, will receive that message. So it's very nice, very easy to play, to play with. And I will show how to consume the data uh, later. Now let's do something here. Let's say I want the surfboard one to turn on the green light. So publish the green light is on here and I want to turn off the green light. Publish. I want all boards connected in my system to turn on the green light. Publish. So both turn on the green light. So I could manage thousands of devices at the same time. And now I'm going to turn off the green light. Turn off very fast. From here to the IoT cloud system and so our edge device, so it's amazing. And uh, let's make some noise. Speaker one. So very fast, they are receiving the message in the, at the same time, look at that. So impressive how fast it is. So just a fast recap. This board, it's been connected to the internet through the USB cable and then accesses the gateway that is running on the laptop. This board is connected to Zigbee, to the uh, wood laptop, laptop uh, has uh, Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's true. Okay. So they are both uh, subscribing the same MQTT queue and they are both publishing the data in the same MQTT queue. So, that's it. So now it's all about having fun because now I encapsulate everything using MQTT and JSON so I can consume in different ways. Um, so the IoT surfing service is a, a very simple uh, Java software with many years of research even being simple, simple in terms of I didn't use lambdas, I didn't use uh, 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 frameworks, I did a, a very small and fast gateway. Uh, so here is a piece of code of our gateway. It's all about creating small services in uh, following the concept of microservices. I'm not the, 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 the big specialist in microservices, but uh, uh, this is the idea of our microservice extends MQTT controller. With that, I can say that uh, this class, I, I'm going to make a, a configuration file, and I'm going to say the name of the class, the interval, if I want to, to, to have some process uh, each five seconds or something, I could put the interval, enable true, and since it is a service that extends MQTT controller, I'm saying which kind of uh, uh, message, which kind of queue I'm going to subscribe, and this service will process this message. Basically, I will send to this service the name of a component, and it will tell me, in, it will speak the value of the sensor in my laptop. So, in just a few lines of code. So, let's show you here our uh, framework. So it's all about having many different types of sensor services. 
administration, audio camera, FTP, JSON, MQTT, persistence with MongoDB, Raspberry Pi integration, REST, and this is the sample that I was showing. Uh, so very, very simple guy to receive a MQTT message and tell me the, uh, the value. So let, sh let me show you here. So now I'm going to say global code slash audio and the name of the uh, sensor, humidity. Humidity, humidity value is 31.00. So you can play with that, like uh, uh, you can play with your computer and you can start communicating in a very human way with your computer. So uh, today we are going to use as eyes uh, the Intel RealSense, uh, ears we are going to use Android, Tasker and Auto Voice, and uh, the nose for the, the alcohol sensor and for the mouth we are going to use eSpeak. So eSpeak is this software that is running in my laptop. It's an open source for Windows, Mac, and Linux with different languages. And we are doing the integration using shell commands to call the eSpeak. We don't have any kind of Java API, native API for doing that. So I really recommend to use eSpeak as text to speech. So I did the demonstration. Uh, uh, showing that I can type the name of the sensor. For voice recognition, we are using Android voice recognition, which is very, very good and powerful. I like very much the Tasker, which is a paid application that you can automatize your, your cell phone in a very different ways. So I used to say, ah, if I receive this voice recognition, then do that. And I'm using MQTT plugin for Tasker. The plugins, the Auto Voice plugins, plugin and the MQTT, they are free. So let me show you here. This demo sometimes is not that easy to work. I really depend on the internet. So I'm going to say temperature, and my computer will answer with the temperature value. Temperature. Temperature. Took some time. <laughs> Thanks. So the other thing I can do, I have the relay here. Now I'm going just to click here and ask to turn on the lamp. So turn on the lamp and turn off the lamp. So it's really IoT stuff, you know. I'm really controlling the things using my cell phone. You can wake up in your bed and say temperature and listen to your house saying the temperature and turn on the light. So this is really big reality, you, you know. You can just wake up and say coffee. Coffee, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think that this is the best part of our presentation. Intel RealSense, we are Intel partners and uh, uh, we can recogni recognize hands, faces, environment, speech, and this very nice camera. This is a one one hundred dollar camera, and uh, it suppose this camera supposed to replace the front camera from your tablet, from your notebook in the next four years. So, think that in. In 40 years, all the computers will have cameras that can recognize your expression. Like if you are this way, write an email. It can say, no, no, I will not send the email. This guy is too nervous to write an email. You can make this kind of intelligence, you know? <laughs> so uh, here is the, you can recognize many points in your hand. So this is, here start being different from the Kinect perspective because it's for a, a, a low distance, uh, small distance. Kinect, you can be like meters distance. And this camera is one meter max. <coughs> and, but in, in other hand, you can have many, many points in your hand and really recognize gestures with your hand moving and things like that. And the face, the same, you can shake your your, 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 your head, you can recognize your expression and things like that. You have the 
SDK for real sense. Uh, you have support for C Sharp, Unity, Java, and processing, which is a very nice tool for graphical environment. And uh, we have here uh, the, a very fast demonstration because we are running out of time. Uh, I have here a very simple sample. Simple sample, I like this. And uh, hence, I'm going to run this file here. It's JavaFX integration. And now I have the camera here, and I can move like this, I can move like this. So very nice, just a few lines of code, and uh, very good. Uh, and uh, what we are going to do now is to use the camera integrated with MQTT and try to control our stuff using gestures and emotion expressions. So I have this this nice client for doing that. Um, let's see how does it work. I'm going to say, I'm going to use this broker, and this uh, is the queue that I'm going to subscribe. And what I'm going to show here first is that if I open my hand, it will start to turn on the speaker. If I close my hand, it stops. So let's see that. The V sign is to exit. OK. And now, what about turning on and turning off a lamp using your smile? Let's see that. Did you see that? <laughs> so, you can integrate anything with MQTT. Oops, now it stopped. Let me turn off the speaker. So, the, the importance of the gateway is exactly to be translating all these different kind of message, protocols, interfaces on and, you know, putting all that to the same protocol like MQTT. So you are gathering everything, putting it together in the way that developers yeah. can work with the, the data. And the last demo to finish here, we have the alcohol sensor. And what I'm going to do is to consume the message. Now I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to use the node red. The node red is a very nice software. Uh, that you can consume MQTT messages this way. So I have here the surfboard one, and what I'm doing here, I am parsing the, the, the JSON data and grabbing the alcohol sensor. So I can see here in the, my debug window, uh, here is the message going to the debug. So I have 300 in the alcohol sensor. I have this switch, if the alcohol sensor is more than 900, I'm going to set up a message, alcohol detected in ta -da -na 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 -na, and I'm going to tweet this message if the alcohol is more than 900. So uh, um, let's open the Twitter. So here we are in my Twitter account uh, to replace the beer because it's too early to drink beers in this stage. I'm going to use the Listerini. That's a real proof that it has a lot of alcohol here. And you can get in trouble with the police. So I'm going to, to do this. I'm going to put here the, OK, the listed in. So I'm making my board to get drunk. And uh, so let's wait for the Twitter message. Uh, here we go. Very fast. You know, IoT surfboard, alcohol detected. So uh, Node-RED is an amazing tool for uh, people that are non-developers and they want to consume IoT data and make some logic with input, output, switches, and things like that. It's a Node-RED, it's a Node.js uh, software written by, uh, uh, by IBM. And uh, you also could do it uh, using uh, JavaScript. 
you have a Pahu uh, API for JavaScript. It's very easy to make a brief analyzer using JavaScript. The code would be something like this. So uh, you could make alert in your website, or you can change your website color based on the temperature. Like if it's hot, you can use a a cold color, if it's cold, you can use a hot color. If it's snowing, you can change your behavior in your website based on sensors, which brings a lot of like integrating CSS, CSS with uh, sensor data would be nice. So uh, our GitHub, you have all the code in our GitHub. Uh, Vsenger is my personal and surfboard is the one that we are putting out this this, this surfboard related framework code in a more organized way. So with that, I would like to say thanks for everybody in, our, in the audience. Thanks to the Vox Marocos. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. Okay, if the, someone wants to make a, any question. We will be here a little bit more. Okay, one question. Yes. Yeah, you can have a security layer. MQTT is very inexpensive protocol in terms of how much it will consume from your network and how much it will consume in terms of power. But you can add like a certificates and keys to make the communication between the edge device and broker uh, a secure communication. No problem with that. You could have many options, actually. You could make, oh? Yes, yes, yes. You can do HTTPS over MQTT. If you, if you are, like uh, you already have the knowledge working with HTTPS and SSL, you can do over many different ways to do that. Okay, so HTTPS would be the most common way to do that, but the problem is that all the, the benefits uh, that you have in the MQTT about being small and fast and everything, the more security you are adding, the heavy it will be, you know? But you can do many different ways. So it's a 15 years protocol, MQTT, and you can actually move from the uh, broker, uh, the public broker, and you can contract very nice brokers in the, uh, in the internet, in the cloud. So, and those brokers, they have many, many types of security service. So don't be afraid, you can prototype using uh, raw data and go into production, you can make certificates and, and put SSL and make everything more secure, you know. Any other question? Please. In the last Mobile.io event, they have uh, introduced a new, uh, a new, two new standards for a hardware layer and communication layer. Two products, they're called Rio and Wii. I want to know your, your, what do you think about these two? Really? Uh, is one more standard coming to the industry. You know, Google is big enough to push a standard, but I think that uh, MQTT is 15 years old, and uh, they just, they, Google itself, they don't know anything about Internet of Things. They know about search engine and everything, so they bought this company, and they are trying to bring that to the Google. So uh, uh, they, they, this team, they have really good, good guys there. It's but not the first acquisition, right? They are they are several making IoT. several acquisitions, but the problem is having something based on Android. For me, it seems like heavy. Android for me, heavy, like uh, uh, is uh, uh, too heavy. They are trying to make Android lighter with different types of profile: Android for cars, Android for this, Android for that. But uh, sometimes we just need something that you don't have operational system and. Uh, the people like more the open source boards than the closed one. So since it's Google, I will not say that uh, they will fail. 
but uh, I don't know if uh, they, they will need to put a lot of, of effort to make it happen in a very nice way and everything. So the way they do that is like they go, you go to Google I.O. and everybody win a board, and so that's an easy way to, to, to push a technology, not the people buying the board itself and etc. So I think that they, they have a chance, but they will compete with at least other 20 different players that, uh, that, that, that they are already in the road in the last 5, 10, 15 years. And, but I'm looking forward. For sure, I, I will buy it, I will study it, and I, I hope that next year I have some Brillio device, and, and I hope to support Brillio protocol in our gateway. And the gateways, they will, they, they, they will need to support all the IoT protocols, and there are many protocols coming. Brillio is just one more. Okay, so uh, we will be around for lunch if you want to talk with us, to have our business card, to know a little bit more about our code. Feel free to keep in touch. Thanks again for coming. Thank you.